Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Stu, and this is Sun and Steel for Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic, the last but one scenario from the Terra Hank pack. The trees on this series of islands are protected by law. Without wood available, you must use steel roller coasters to satisfy your fearless guests. Your objective to have 10 different types of roller coasters operating in your park, each with a minimum length of 3,609 feet and an excitement rating of at least 7. So for the sake of remembering it easily, I'm just going to aim for coasters over 3,700 feet. And for those using metric, that works out as, the 3,609 works out as 1,100 meters. Um, it mentions something about trees. Okay, so trees are protected. Thankfully, there isn't that many. Let's zoom all the way out there. Okay, so we've got a series of islands. An archipelago, if you will. Um, not a huge amount of trees, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. The length requirement is a bit of a shame because I just feel with those, you're just building coaster, long coasters for the sake of it, whereas I think coasters should be as long as they need to be. Okay, so we're charging for admission, so we'll just put that up to 40, and then guests, you know, once we've built enough guests, we'll pay. We're, no, we're probably not going to use that because let's face it, we haven't got a huge amount of space unless we can build, we can buy more, can we? No. And we haven't got any rights to any additional land either, or sea, for that matter. We've got no gentle rides. We've got a couple of coasters, or a few coasters to begin with. Um, a top spin, no water rides, and a few shops. So I think what we'll do, we'll put our research into the shops. This is going to be a long scenario. You know, building that many coasters is going to take a while anyway. It's going to be very expensive, so we're going to have to get our economy going. So I'm going to research shops first. Maybe put down a placeholder coaster or two to begin with. Get the guests coming in and maybe we can start connecting out the islands whilst we're waiting for the guest numbers to come in and, and things to research. Once we research that kiosk, that's going to give us the sweet umbrella cash, which we could be benefiting from now if the park was open. Um, and that'll get the, the money really coming in. June, year one. So, slight change of plan. And we've got a placeholder coaster down there. It's a looping coaster. It's set to three laps. As you can see, the intensity is up high. Why have I done that? Because if we look at the guests, look, there's Nelly. Nelly wants to go on a ride with intensity over nine. Eddie, over nine. Luke over nine. So guests want high intensity rides. So that means ideally intensity over nine, but providing our park rating is up on maximum, they will go on something seven or more roughly. Um, so I think what I've done now is I've put down a couple of top spins like that there, and there's a third one just hidden in the corner there. I'm researching thrill rides. So the plan is, I'm hoping for something bigger and better that come out, um, like the towers, and um, I can replace them. That'll get the guests coming in. Um, and then what we can do then is we can connect up the islands, get our shops and things out, kiosks, toilets, that sort of thing. And, um, and then maybe put down a few more placeholder coasters. And then once that money is really coming in, we can start going from coaster to coaster, extending them. October year one, almost 500 guests in the park. We've got a roto drop just down there. Intensity is good enough. We've got a launch tower just there. Intensity is good enough for that. And an enterprise just there. And we've got that set to 20 rotations to boost intensity as well. That does boost the nausea, so we're going to have to make sure we've got a lot of handymen down zone them that sort of thing to protect against sick just like all the other rides there so i think we've we've extended we've we've done the bridge you saw that earlier i've started decorating it i'm going to do the same this side do some little parv loops and things maybe connect up this little island as well um because we are gonna have to be quite careful i suppose with the coasters um at least to begin with i'm sure by the end it's just going to be a mass or a mess of, of tangled coasters. Um, but I'm sure some people like that. Me personally, no. 
but you know i'm sure some people do october year two so rather than listening to my own advice and putting placeholder coasters down i decided to extend the looping coaster and i had it as a complete circuit the the two spikes that we got there i had connected and it was very short like like way too short so i just converted them into spikes and then ran it as a shuttle and the length is enough it's enough we need 3609 we've got 3776 that's more than enough as i said i'm going to be aiming for over 37 just as an easy reminder for myself excitement needs to be over seven so we've checked both those boxes let's zoom out so we've got a bridge over to this island and a little path loop there i figure we can put something inside there um we've got a little island over there we can have something over there and we've got a path loop around this bigger island as well toilets and kiosks on all the major corners hopefully that'll make us out eligible for best toilets and then we can win some awards get some more guests in who will go who will give us more money basically um shops and stuff all around the place got the building done for the ride there so i am going to be focusing on trying to make the place look pretty as well i think this coaster looks pretty good nice interaction with the bridge there a couple of loops goes inside its own loops twice and then back in reverse so yeah cool anyway now for those placeholder coasters i was talking about october year three 1100 guests in the park 14,000 in cash we're doing well and coaster number two is done it's called flamingo what else would it be called with a color scheme like this excitement rating almost nine and the length over 4,000 feet so checked both those boxes and then some so we've got loads of loops on this and this little weird bit that you can see now with the just to aid throughput there's a little little block break section there now I haven't ignored my own advice. We have got some placeholder coasters just over here. We've got a stand-up coaster just there. Obviously, the stats aren't going to be good enough just yet. But this is just to ensure that we've got some coasters down. The station is pretty much done as I'd like it to be. And then we can just extend it later. And then we've got another one then just over this side. We've got a little twister coaster just there. It launches out into a cutback. And then we've got a little photo section. Another launch section then into the cutback. And look at the lateral G. So the lateral G's, without that lateral G penalty, the intensity would be a bit lower. With the lateral G penalty, it gives us a bit more intensity. So the guests will ride it. So that's pretty cool. So as you can see from the money, we get in now seven thousand a month on entrance tickets, shop sales. So it probably rained in September. That's why we got the two thousand. So money wise, we're doing well. We can sort of take our time extending coasters, putting new ones down, etc. Um, I think that twister coaster. I'll probably leave that to last because that's going to be the easiest one to do when the place. Assuming the place is going to be rammed full of coasters, which it probably will. Um, because if you look how like this one's doesn't take as much space because it's a shuttle so it's it's doing the whole thing twice effectively so it would be twice as long as this if it was a complete circuit so this one is a good idea of what you're going to expect lengthwise so yeah we could get away with it being a little bit shorter but not much so um yeah so we're gonna have to have another eight coasters that length around the place so yeah it's going to be a bit of a mess coaster number three is done it's a junior coaster excitement fine length fine as well again look lateral g's so you've got a bit of a penalty there that's intentional in order to boost the intensity so guests will ride it so it's got two stations here so technically it's mobius but if you look at the stats it doesn't show up as mobius if it did what you would see is you would see two lengths and you would see two ride times um but because the guests can't ride both sections it doesn't show up so don't worry about that that does mean it won't include 
the second part. So let me hide scenery. So there you go. So you've got the entrance station and the exit station. When the, they sync up, so the exit station train will drop down underneath, back up and connect to the entrance station. That just allows me to get the synchronization bonus because I was a bit because junior coasters, you know, they are quite tricky to get good stats on, but in the end, it would have been fine just with that. Um, if this was a true Mobius and guests could board on both sides, as I said, you would see those two different stats there. And providing those two stats are in total over the required length, it would count. I'm probably not going to go for any Mobius coasters on this one. Um, simply because I don't think we're going to have the space because of the trees, because you need a lot of space for, I don't want to build too much over the water and I, and we're not going to have enough room on land because of the, the trees. So yeah, a bit of a shame. Um, oh, I'm there. Had a bit of a weird blip on the screen there. So I just stopped and restarted the recording just in case. So we're, we haven't moved on time wise so this is the stand-up coaster it's not long enough yet i just started working on a design and rather than continuing getting the length right i just stopped it to see the stats and the intensity is too high which is a shame because i like these little corkscrews there but we're probably gonna have to get rid of those i'll sacrifice those in order to keep the bat wings i like that so hopefully when i extend this it'll be fine Coaster number four, surf and turf, stand-up coaster done. Well, I say done, the length is fine. The excitement rating is 6.99. So once we interact and have a ride with it, it'll be over the seven. So don't worry about that. So it takes you up the chain lift. Oh, there you go. Down through that little, you saw the flash in the glitch of the graphics then, hiding a little um, head chopper path. Through the bat wing, down. Little trick track. A little bit going all the way around, because why not? Because we need that, that length. And then around here. And then we got a trick track underneath along. Oh, hang on. Have I? I'll fix that later. Don't worry. That little, those panels are, are slightly out. Um, Yeah, and back to the station. So stats, all good. Cool. 1,200 guests in the park. Look at the money. The money's rolling in. Um, so we are earning it faster than we can spend it. So that's cool. So I think we need to start working on some more coasters then. August year six. Okay, so Surf and Turf. Excitement 7.37. So that one's done. The stand-up is done. And coaster number five, Time Untied. Excitement fine, length fine. So we've got for, gone for a corkscrew coaster interacting with the stand-up coaster. And I like that because they're both basically using the same track types. If you look, the, the track types are basically identical. So that's cool. It works out well. Good interactions with each other. Oh, there you go. So it comes out of the station. We've got this little bit by a little bit of a, like a pre-lift section. Just add a little bit of length to it. Then it comes up, then it drops down. Goes all the way around. We've got a loop in there. We've got a couple of corkscrews. And we've got a Cobra roll. Basically, some of the things that I wanted to do with a stand-up, but you can't do that with a stand-up because the stand-up isn't as forgiving as some of the other rides are. Um, the Twister stand-up, that would have been fine with all that shenanigans. Um, yeah, so all in all, this is doing, this is looking good. This whole island, I think, is done. I don't think we can do much with that. We can maybe interact at a later date, but as far as... Um, station buildings are concerned i don't think we're going to get any more on that so that's we've done five we could possibly do something else on here or at least on one of the beaches um i don't know about this island there's probably nothing on the island maybe on the sea off the island um so that might take us up to seven we could do something in the middle here do something there nine wait i don't know um, yeah, let's just crack on <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll come to that when we come to it. August year seven and coaster number six is done. It's called Charybdis. Yeah, I why do I do that? I, I think, oh, that'd be a cool name. And then I come to actually pronouncing it on the video and I struggle. Um, so it's an inverted coaster. It comes out. Got a couple of corkscrews in the, the pre-lift section. So 
I experimented with different heights and what I did was I just had it coming down, had the corkscrew, um, the S bend there, that's just because of the trees, had the corkscrew and then I had it coming back to the station and I just tried it at different heights until that bit worked and once it did, then I started building the rest of it. So I think the station looks pretty cool. So I started off with the basic walls and then I've gone back and I've deleted some and added in the different texture ones. So I, I think it looks looks nice. Um, so yeah, it comes out and then we've got a couple of corkscrews. We've got the lift hill up there, down. Sea serpent roll, because uh, a Charybdis apparently is like a, a Greek sea monster, even though this doesn't spend that much time at sea and then we've got a few turnarounds some barrel roads we've got a, a cobra roll over the bridge and um yeah it's pretty funky so yeah that's that's cool so what are we up to now we're up to six um yeah and we are starting to run out of space so i think this is probably where it stops looking neat and tidy and after this it's going to start getting very messy. May your eight coaster number seven is done. Excitement and length fine. So we've got a swinging suspended, whatever you call it, coaster. It comes up, drops down. We've got a bit of a slow sort of meandering section where guests would be able to take in the views, check all around the place. And then after that, then it starts getting faster and faster, crazier and crazier until they get to the point where, oh, this is a bit too much for me. Just a shame the train wasn't catching up to me as I was saying that. Um, and yeah, it goes all the way around a bit and then we got like a, a brake run just there. There's one thing I've noticed on these trains I'm going to have to start looking at. Oh, we might be able to see it now with the stand up. Have I? No, I've I've done this one shouldn't stop yeah it does stop so i do need to work on the block section that's not too bad though it's only a brief pause but it would be nice if there was no pause at all so maybe i'll have to what i'll have to do with these i'll show you on this one so what i've done is i've got the minimum waiting time to 35 seconds i might put that up slightly um or when it comes to recording the outro um maybe i'll just run them as one train um, that's another thought as well. If the trains are taking two minutes, and if I include every single one on the outro, that's going to be 20 minutes. That's way too long. So I think what I might do is one or two on the outro. Maybe I'll do separate videos for the rest of the trains. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Um, so, yeah, what are we up to now? We're up to seven. Right. Let's just crack on. Let's get course number eight done. Okay. So course number eight. Eight is done, but I've renamed course number eight to course number seven. I've renamed course number seven to course number eight. Hope you're keeping up. Okay, so the reason I've done that is because when I finished it, it ended up with seven inversions, and I just thought I'd call it seven C's. Um, so that's why we changed the name for it. So it's a flying coaster. Yes, I always get those confused. Because if you look, I don't know if I've shown you, we've, we've finished researching rides years ago they're all done years ago um i've been neglecting my duties as a host to show you what we've what we've got and let's have a look at the coasters okay so we've already got a junior coaster we've got a looping coaster we've got a stand up we've got a corkscrew we haven't got one of those we've got a twister down that we need to extend we've done the suspended swing coaster we haven't got one of those we've done that one we're not going to use that one We've got a lay down coaster. We've done the flying coaster. We've, we were not going to use one of them. Um, we've got the vertical drop. So that leaves us them, which is, they're just ugly. That, which we're not going to use. That, that, which we're not going to use. Um, and that. So we haven't got a great deal of choice. But um, anyway, let's look at the flying coaster. So it comes up, interacts nicely with. The vertical drop, which means the stats for this have shot up to 9.5. Um, so it drops down. We've got this little section with the sort of half barrel roll to get it on its back. And then drops down because there's, um, which one did I write? I rode, um, it used to be called Air in Alton Towers, but now it's called 
Galactica. So I rode it when I went to Alton Towers. And the section where it flips you on your back, that was brilliant. And then flips you back, that was really good. So it's it's really cool to experience those things if you can in real life. Um, just to just to give you an idea of of how it works, you know. Although it's probably not going fast enough for that, but I just like the idea that they'd be flipped on their back or they'd be looking up at the sky and it'd be all cool. And then yeah, a few twists and turns. We we can't be too choosy at this at this point. So we've got this very very long awkward section down here. Melman there. Turn around interaction with the cobra roll boost the stats slightly and then back it's, it's like i said before you know with these sorts of scenarios you end up having really long awkward coasters um i would never build coasters like this you know coasters this long normally with uh, especially in this type of coaster because it's just just really just looks weird i mean I don't know what else I can do. You know, we are limited for space. I think in an ideal world, I might have just had it doing a couple of laps of this island, but that would just be weird as well. And it would spoil the view of, of Flamingo. Um, so what are we up to? We're up to Coaster. Num no, we're up to Coaster 8 now. And we've got the Twister. That's going to be number 10. Um, so we've got to do number 9. And really, the only two spaces are in this shot here so it's either in the middle of the water there or on that beach there june year nine and coaster number nine is done it's called storm surge length is fine excitement is fine why is it empty ah huh. maybe it's because the intensity isn't high enough huh. maybe i should have added like a, a lateral g penalty in there somewhere get more guests to ride it but that's fine i mean look at the cash it's not like we need the money. We got a quarter of a million in the bank. Um, so, yeah, um, it comes up very, very long. How high is it going? 130 feet. Drops down. And it basically just interacts with all the islands apart from the island Flamingo is on, you know. So it's just goes all the way around here. Um, and I'm back. And then back around here, and then back to the station. Um, yeah, it's a very basic coaster. The station doesn't look particularly nice either. But I was I wanted to get all the diff all the coasters in like different color schemes. Um, so I was kind of left with with sort of like. Well, I wanted black and white, but but the white just looks really weird on here. Let me show you. See, it just looks from certain angles. It's okay. And from others, it's just weird. Like from this angle where you can see the shades, it's fine. But from the others, it's it just looks weird. Whereas with this one, you can see the different shades from every angle. Yeah, so anyway, let's just get on and build, extend the coaster, the, the twister. So I figure we'll have it launching out into some sort of top hat and then down and just going around the place crazy styles. And um, yeah, we can pass the scenario. October 9, over 1,400 guests in the park, but we're not worried about that. We've got a quarter of a million in the bank. We're not worried about that. We've done coaster number 10. It's called Riptide. Good stats, good length as well. There we go. And we. So, yeah, I have noticed that before. Um, look at the look at the the canvas roof on the brake run. <laughs> this is all over the place. Okay, this is the problem with the isometric view. Um, yeah, that's just what what have I even done there? Um, yeah, I'm gonna fix that. Okay, let's let's try that again. Coaster number ten is called Riptide. Good excitement and good length on that. And look at the canvas roof on the brake run. It's in the same spot every time we rotate. That's that's cool, isn't it? Um, yeah. So I figure I'll I'll keep I'll keep that bit in, um, <laughs> because it's I suppose it's good to show that even after playing hundreds of scenarios and thousands of hours, and that's just on classic. That doesn't include all the hours on Roller Coaster Tycoon One 
Roller Coast Tycoon 2, and Open RCT 2 either. Um, I still do things like that because it's so easily done. And you know what? It would make a good post on my Facebook page, my new Facebook page. So here's a plug for that, where sometimes I do behind the scenes and also tips and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so check that out. So this one is done. We haven't opened it yet. And what I've done is I've put the usual stuff with the build tens. So I've put this one, I've stopped it, and then I've toggled the speed so it doesn't know about this coaster. So as far as the game's concerned, we've got nine coasters over the required length and excitement. Once the test results come back for this one, it will register as being complete. Well, it'll be complete and then it takes a while for the game to register. It checks at the start of each day. So thanks to Broxia for, he's one of the open RCT two devs for giving me that bit of information. Um, the, the, the code for that is based on RCT two. So it'll be the same in this or more or less the same. So it's just about making it through the loops. When it's got guests on, it'll be faster. So it should be fine. Well, it hasn't stopped so far. I mean, we're 10 years in. Um, we're 10 years into the scenario and it hasn't had a problem so far. Where would be a nice place to look for balloons and stuff? Does the stats come back yet? Oh, hang on. Why is this one closed? Oh, there you go. Um, stew. Awesome sauce. So it's probably, I probably clicked because it's such a mess of coasters. I probably closed one, the wrong one by mistake. Um, yeah, so that scenario is done. And I said it was going to end up, I don't know. Some people will probably look at this and think, oh, that looks so cool. I look at it and it's just like, wow, what a, what a mess. Of Tango. I mean, this island looked fantastic when it was just the two coasters. And Flamingo looked cool when it was just on its own. And yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a bit of a mess, I think. Um yeah, so um let me know if you want me to do separate POV videos for all of the coasters. I figure it's just gonna be too much. To do all of them let's look at this one this one's this one's over a minute long some of them are two minutes long if i do all 10 it's going to be an extra 15 to 20 minutes for each one so this was sun and seal for roller coaster tycoon classic if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye